I'm going to begin, James Bars. I mean, I sort of grew up with, with the X-Men kind of franchise. I, was, I think I was about 12 or 13 years old when the first one came out. So I've kind of followed this journey with... With Hugh Jackman's you. with you, you know. Um, growing up. Yeah, growing up. And this film feels like it's really made for a kind of mature audience. But was this, is, are you making this for those, this, that kind of demographic uh, in of a people? Way, that, not to sound overly uh, sycophantic, but I, I'm making the movie for you. Mm. I mean, the oh. movie was in a way made for, for the generation that grew up with these films. Um, part of our theorizing on making it an adult rating was giving something to fans that they've been asking for for a long time in terms of the intensity of the fighting. But also giving them something else, I think, I don't know that they were clamoring for, but that I thought would really be satisfying, which is more of an emotional punch and more sophistication. A little less of a film trying to straddle being for nine-year-olds and adults at the same time. Because I mean, do you think in some ways that the success of, of Deadpool really gave producers and studios a bit more kind of... Um... Uh, encouragement to make films with a kind of R rating. I do. You know? I yeah. think it made it a little easier. I mean, we had written this movie before Deadpool came out, but I think that the studio, I think it definitely bolstered their confidence that there's a way to market movies like this successfully. Because, I mean, despite the fact it is an incredibly violent film and very brutal in its depiction of violence, you almost feel every single death. And I think sometimes taking a more kind of cartoon approach makes death more kind of... Um, almost more frivolous, you know, you just tons of people just I died. completely agree with I you. Was, I think our film, our film does lean into the choreography and the blood um, a, a lot, but, the, but our film also, I think more concretely speaks to the audience about the finality of death and the, that violence brings death and also great shame to people. Um, in many ways, um, part of what the movie meditates about is can you do harm to people and then go on living with it? With, with, with your own self? Can you live with the burden and the shame of having killed? I mean, and in, in spite of that side of the movie, I mean, there is a kind of comedic edge. And I think uh, Stephen Merchant is very funny, particularly in the early kind of stages yeah. of this film. Did you give him a bit of license to improvise? Because there were a few lines that seemed so kind of um, in line with his sensibilities as a comic actor. I wasn't sure if you, they were written for him in mind or if he brought them we, himself. Uh, it's a combo. I think that we, but yes, uh, it's a quick answer. I think we did more improvising in rehearsals where I would let him I would let him loose and he'd spout out things and I'd scribble them down and take credit for them and put them in the script but the uh, but the um, but he is quite brilliant um, and one of the sweetest men in the world as well but the um, but S Stephen did come up with some really golden stuff that's in the picture and I love how subtle the kind of 2029 setting is. I mean, because it's so easy when films are set in the future to be sort of quite overstated with the yes. depiction. Um, I was wondering how you went about kind of portraying the future in, in this movie and how, and how you, what you decided to, to alter about the way kind of society functions. Well, I thought a lot about, about, you know, I've been alive a while and when I look at the world 10 years, 15 years, or I think about what the, you know, I was from New York City, I look at New York City now, uh, compared to 10 years ago, it doesn't look that different. Um, that the, that some buildings changed, some things changed, certainly after 9-11, something very major in New York changed. But the, but the reality is, other than cars and styles of dress and the music people are listening to, it really occurred to me that the changes are all much slower than anyone anticipated. Um, that, that, that we always think the world's going to turn into a different world so fast. But there were really, movement is glacial um, in terms of progress. And we tried to take, A, we didn't have the money. To make an adult-themed movie, we had to do this movie with less money. So we didn't have the money to rebuild the world. But I also wanted to take a more relaxed and less uh, aggressively, like, world-building, designy vision of the future. Because I thought it might actually seem more real to people. And just very quickly, I mean, you said, I was reading about you being attached to seducing Ingrid Bergman as, as a project. Is that still kind of on the cards? And if so, how do you go about casting a, a character? Like that, that? That's a great question in terms of casting. But yes, I'm still working on that. Oh, brilliant. And no closer to casting then? No, I have no news to reveal. <laughs> brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Much Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.